Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're taking another deep dive, and this time it's all about The Diplomat, that Netflix show everyone's talking about. Oh yeah, it's a good one. So good. Yeah. But have you noticed how it leaves you wanting more? Totally. Like, how can they just end it there? Right. Especially with most streaming shows going on forever. That's actually what we'll be unpacking today. Really interesting. We'll be looking at an article called Why the Diplomat Leaves Us Wanting More, a rare Netflix gem begging for extra episodes mm. to, well, find out why it leaves us wanting more. Makes sense. Okay, so first off, the article mentions something pretty unusual. Apparently, the showrunner actually chose to have these shorter seasons. Oh, wow. Really? That's not something you hear very often. I know. And it's especially weird when you think about Netflix. Yeah. They usually want as much content as possible, right? Yeah, for sure. It's all about keeping people on the platform. More episodes, more watch time. Exactly. So this whole thing with The Diplomat is kind of an anomaly. Like, the showrunner basically said, nope, I'd rather have fewer episodes and make sure they're really good. <laughs> Interesting. And honestly, I think it really pays off. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's one of the things that makes this show so great. Most shows would drag this kind of premise out over, like, 10 or 12 episodes. Easy. Totally. But The Diplomat keeps it tight. Each season tells a complete story, and there's no fluff. Right. And that really lets them dive deep into the characters and the plot. I mean, think about everything that happens in just six episodes. So much. The pacing is amazing. You're constantly on the edge of your seat. It's like a perfectly crafted puzzle where every piece fits perfectly. Great analogy. <laughs> and speaking of perfectly crafted, the article talks about how the show blends different genres so well. It's a political thriller, for sure, but it's also got these moments of sharp comedy and humor. Oh, absolutely. That scene where Kate's trying to fix her broken heel in the middle of a negotiation with the French ambassador. Classic. Classic. So funny. It's like international crisis over here, broken shoe over there. Exactly. And it's not just silly humor either. It's really smart and witty, and it fits perfectly with the characters and the world they live in. Totally agree. It makes these high-powered diplomats feel so much more human and relatable. Like, they're dealing with huge global issues, but they're also just people who trip and break their shoes sometimes. Right. And speaking of relatable characters, we have to talk about Carrie Russell as Kate Weiler. What a performance, right? Phenomenal. She's so good at portraying the complexity of Kate. She's incredibly competent, but she's also vulnerable. Totally. And she has these moments where you can just see the pressure and responsibility weighing on her. Do you remember that scene in season one where she breaks down in her hotel room? Oh, yeah. That was so powerful. You could really feel the weight of everything she was carrying. She makes you root for Kate, even when she's making tough decisions. Definitely. And then there's that whole subplot about her potentially being considered for the vice presidency. Oh, right. I love that storyline. It adds this extra layer of tension to everything. It's like, is she ambitious enough to go for it? Yeah. What will she have to sacrifice? It keeps you guessing. And it makes us even more excited for the next season. Speaking of which, season three is officially happening. And get this, the diplomat is moving to New York City. Big change. I wonder what kind of diplomatic dramas will unfold in the Big Apple. Right. New York has a completely different political and cultural landscape compared to London. It'll be interesting to see how Kate navigates that. Totally. And the article even suggests that Netflix might be open to a full eight-episode season this time. Ooh, that would be awesome. More time to explore those storylines and character dynamics. I'm really curious to see how Kate's relationship with her husband, Hal, will evolve. Me too. The relationship was so central to the first two seasons. It really yeah. was. Okay, so before we finish this deep dive into The Diplomat, I have a question for you and for all our listeners. Yeah. What new diplomatic challenges do you think Kate will face in New York City? What are you most excited to see in season three? Let us know. I'm ready for anything. Me too. Thanks for joining us for another deep dive. We'll see you next time.